Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo. It's sunny outside in Seattle, and this is the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short. Your daily dose of tech news, gadget views, and answers that you can use. The Locker Gnome Daily Report is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces, the powerfully simple way to meet online from anywhere. With GoToMeeting, you can share your screen and collaborate on files and programs with your team, all while seeing each other in HD video. You can easily launch or join a meeting using your computer, phone, or tablet, even present from your iPad, and more on that in just a second. I use GoToMeeting all the time. In fact, I'm using it with our Vlogger Fair associates to make sure everything's on track for our event this summer. Hopefully, you'll attend. Registration coming soon. So, to try GoToMeeting, free for 30 days, visit gotomeeting.com, click the try it free button, use the promo code Perillo. Plus, one of you is going to be getting an iPad and an opportunity to have a 30 minute go-to meeting with me that will also be shared on this YouTube channel. All you have to do to enter is tell me what you would like to talk about in our go-to meeting. Just propose your idea on Twitter using the hashtag Perillo iPad and the hashtag go-to meeting to qualify. Someone else is getting married, matching tablets for the honeymoon and beyond. Congratulations, Christopher Smith. Christopher Smith asked me by way of LockerGnome.com what he should do with his tax return. He wants to buy a tablet, but here's the thing. He's getting married in 2014, and he wants to save money for the wedding. So, he notes his fiancé, 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 and he both have Android phones, and she currently uses a first-generation Amazon Kindle that's in desperate need of an upgrade. Do I have any advice? Yes, my advice is to take the hundreds of dollars that you get with your tax return and buy two tablets so you can each have one. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Do you really need a mobile data plan for your tablet? I'm glad you asked, Ben. My response? No, you don't. As a matter of fact, I haven't purchased a data plan for my tablet. I don't even have a tablet with capabilities of handling a data plan. That would be something beyond Wi-Fi, a 4G connection, a 3G connection. I just have paid the extra money for it in the past and just never end up using it. If I do anything, I would use my smartphone to tether any kind of other device, including laptops. But what works for me may not work for you. I know there are a lot of devices out there for you to choose from, but there's one easy way of saving money, and that is cutting out the option of buying the device that carries a data plan, or at least supports a data plan. Why is the default OS drive assigned to the letter C? Well, at least in Windows, because I don't think I have a C drive in OS X, and I certainly don't in Ubuntu. Back in the day, including one of my first PCs, computers didn't have hard drives. They had floppy drives, potentially even two floppy drives, A drive, B drive. So when computers shipped with hard drives, well, the next letter available, C. That's why a lot of CD-ROM drives, did you guys ever have a computer with one of those? I, I remember, that was usually the letter D. Hard to believe we once used floppy disks. Also hard to believe we used CD-ROMs and hard drives. We've got something on deals.lockernome.com for all of you who are in business or know of someone who is in business or wanting to start their own business. How to gain your first 1,000 customers. Now, that's a big deal, especially if you're just starting out or if you're looking to start a business. We're here to help and to save you money. Whoa, a 50% discount on that? Nice. Apple is beta testing an update that kills the evasion jailbreak. So if you're thinking about doing it, no time like the present to do it. WebOS finds a new life yet again, this time in LG televisions. Really? WebOS is still alive? Is it even being actively developed? At all? Even by the open source community? I, I thought it was... I thought it was dead. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you have a WebOS device on you and you're using it, it's a zombie! Sony jumps on the Mozilla bandwagon, will launch Firefox OS device in 2014, and we're going to be uploading a video of the Firefox OS to this very channel, so stay tuned. I believe that one may be going up either today or tomorrow, but we also have a video on the HTC One to publish. Hopefully, you like both of them. Google said to be developing a music subscription service. Nice! Competition's good, especially with the same music. I mean, I use Pandora, I use Spotify, I use the Amazon Cloud Drive with the MP3 sitting there, and I never really use the MP3 storage. I mean, I use it, I just never listen to MP3s. It's just so much easier to go to Pandora, Spotify, and just press the play button. I'm happy to switch from one of these music subscription services to the other, if only because it might save me money and give me better selection. Tim Stevens over at Engadget says the Chromebook Pixel in his review is another impractical marvel from Google. Oh, that was a backhanded compliment. Maybe I won't be getting the Chromebook Pixel after all. It's a chunk of change. No doubt it's a great piece of hardware, even though the touchscreen in certain reviews has shown itself to be a little laggy. 
It's Google. What do you expect? Uh, I just don't know if it is really going to stand up against its contemporaries. A Surface Pro, a MacBook Air, or a Chromebook Pixel. Nokia is going to be releasing new Windows phones soon, including a Lumia 520 at $180 and a mid-range Lumia 720 at $330. Are you going to get a Windows phone now? Is that enough to tip the scales? Visa and Samsung look to be doing an NFC deal, which is a BFD. I mean, to this point, I've yet to go into any retailer that had NFC. I I'm ready with NFC accessories, but I just haven't had a chance to use it yet. App.net is now opening itself for free registrations, because normally you would have to pay money to get an account. I did. Haven't really used it all that much. It's basically an ad-free alternative to Twitter. I have a few invites available if you want a free account, and with a free account, you can follow up to uh, 40 users and get 500 megabytes of free storage versus paying for an account uh, with being able to follow unlimited uh, users, get 10 gigabytes of storage, and upload files 100 gigabytes or greater. So if you'd like to get one of those invites, just let me know in the comments below. I'll pick one of you, especially if you remember to like and share this video. Are you looking for an open source alternative to Dropbox? Look no further than OwnCloud. That's O-W-N cloud.org. Install it for yourself and be tethered to Dropbox no more. Autodesk's 123D Creature was on sale this weekend, and with this application, you can design your own creature. So let's go ahead and open this guy. And I can give him arms and muscles there, or whatever the hell they're going to be. I can zoom in, zoom out. I can twist him around. Let's go ahead and bulk up his arms. And see, it automatically mirrors on the other side. So it's in perfect congruence. Well, let's do something else here. Let's make his head really big. There we go. Fun, huh? When I'm done, I could export the file or even send it to a 3D printer. Our question of the day is brought to you by GoDaddy.com, and I will send you my latest list of GoDaddy coupons if you email me and ask for them. Chris at Perillo.com. UrgeBot1777 asks, Android in an Apple ecosystem. What's the major disadvantage? He owns an iPhone 4S, a MacBook Pro, an iPad, and an Apple TV. But... He's kind of interested in the Nexus 4. The biggest disadvantage of owning an Android device in Apple's ecosystem is that, well, it's just going to stick out like a sore thumb, apart from using services that don't necessarily belong to Apple. So if you use your iPhone, let's say, or your iPad to connect to a calendar, if you used Google Calendar, well, the Nexus 4 would work just fine with Google Calendar on any device. It might work better with Google Calendar on an Android. It comes down to subtleties. For example, it'd be difficult for me to make a switch outright. I can still enjoy this device for what it is, but I kind of like AirPlay. And after you've used AirPlay, you kind of can't live without it. And I'm not saying that Apple's devices are quote unquote easier to use. I'm just saying that they were made to work with one another. I don't think anybody would disagree with me on that last point, but even if you do, thanks anyway for liking and sharing the content that we are creating for you every day. Thank you for letting other people know that we exist because we're happy to do this for you because you're happy to watch the things that we do for you. We'll eat you later.